pushing your car all over Beverly Hills. So walk. This is the last time I'm going to push. Hey, what are you having for dinner? I'll find out. Hi, Mom. Hi, honey. What are we having for dinner? Roast beef. Why? Can a house do it? If you want him to. Roast beef. Roast beef, huh? Sounds good. What time? Around 6.30. I'll let you know. <laughs> you crumb. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all, Lottie. I'm having dinner at Jerry's. Oh? Here, you keep your fingers out of there. Here, now you take this tray out to your mama. There's lots of people here already. Big deal. Yeah. If you want to stay down here, you better change your clothes. Your father won't want you meeting anyone like that. Can I use your car tonight? Won't we'll be back from the garage till tomorrow morning. Well, you think Dad might let me use his? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Well, do me a favor, will you? You ask him. Ask him yourself. But don't you think it'd be better if you asked him? Look, you're the one who wants to use the car, not me. You ask him. Oh, but please, Mom. Hal, he's your father. What's on the menu? Liver. Liver. Too bad we're having dinner out. Huh? Sorry, I'm late. It's all right, Dave. Hi, bud. Who's your tailor? I'll be down in a minute. What's on for tonight? Oh, I don't know. Jerry and I thought we'd go to the movies. Jerry Doyle? Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. His father still selling hardware? No. Is that what he does? No, he sells cars. Cars, huh? 
How's your car holding up? Okay. No more ruptured fenders? No, not yet. You got any speeding tickets lately? Not lately. You're slipping. Middle age is slowing me down. You'd be in bad shape if you lived to be 20, won't you? All right. What about your car? My car? You gonna be using it tonight? What'd you have in mind? Well, I don't know. I just thought if you weren't gonna use it, maybe you'd let me use it. Didn't you just tell me that your car was in prime condition? Battery shot. What's the matter? Doesn't she have a radio in her living room? Huh? <laughs> I just thought if you didn't need your car tonight, well, it'd save us pushing mine after the show. Oh, I don't think one more night of pushing is likely to inflict any lasting damage on your physique. Do you? I suppose not. Then there would seem to be an outside possibility of your being able to get along without my car. Skip it. Of course, we could always sell your car, and you could take your chances on using mine when I don't need it. Is that what you had in mind? No. Bear up, bud. Life isn't all that tough. We just have to make the most of what little we do have. I have to take this down a lot of you. Hey, bud. Getting pretty crowded in there, isn't it? Wait a minute. Here, uh... See if this fits you. Hey, that looks great. You like it? Yeah. You got a jacket. If you can find a pair of pants to go with that, you can come to the party. Start, huh? <laughs> oh, you. Putting your feet down where they belong, please. Thank you. You can't go to movies anymore without being plagued by these kids.
Look, if you didn't take him down, we'll have to get the manager. Take what down? Whatever they are. They're my knees. What the hell? I got thrown out of here once before because I had my feet up on a chair. And that means keep them down. Why do you come to the movies? To watch the picture of annoy people. Look, mister. My feet are down now. If you're so interested in watching the crummy movie, just watch it, will you? Well, don't, don't get tough with me, Sonny. Down in front, please. I'll be quiet. Hey, will you sit down in front, will you? You stay there and don't talk anybody. Down in front, down shut in up. front, please. I'm calling for the manager. So what? I'm not bothering anybody. He isn't sitting in the crummy seat, is he? Excuse me, sir. All right, you two come with me. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry they bothered me. It's all right. I told you two to come with me. I don't want any trouble about it. Who are you? The manager of this theater. Now, come on. We might as well go. If you look around, mister, maybe you can find someone else to fight with. That is, without a doubt, the longest, crummiest battle scene I've ever watched in my entire life. Come on, get moving. Both of you, come on. So we can get our money back, at least? It'll pay us for leaving. Hey, wait a minute, you two. I told you two to wait. Can we get our money back? Get into my office. Why? Is that where you keep the money? I said get into my office. Why? Never mind that now. Just get in there. You know, you're not being very civil about this. Well, that's too bad. I don't think I really like you very much. Go to my office. Take your crummy hands off me. Good evening. Now, this is the last time I'm going to tell you. I think I'll just leave. Hey, get it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Okay, Samson, I'll go quietly. Well, you had enough? Come on, shit. Hey, come here, come here, come on. You get off my desk. Get off the desk. They still. Mm-hmm. I tried to stop them from causing a disturbance. They got rough about it. This one here is the one that hit me. You sure picked the right way to get yourself in a whole mess of trouble, then. I've got a few complaints of my own. I want to press charges against this guy. He attacked me. Yeah, sure he did. Better watch out for that one, Sergeant. You just better watch out for me. Just stop it. Cut it out. This guy and his buddy out there attacked me. Sure, I was bothering some guy in the movies. I had my feet up on a chair. Big deal. I thought they wanted to throw me out. Okay, I tried to leave and they jump on me. You hit him, didn't you? Well, sure I hit him. It was self-defense. We've got another name for it. Come on. Uh, better bring his friend along here, too. Bring this one along, too. I'm going to press charges against him. Look, are you going to behave or do I have to put the cuffs on you? I was attacked. Yeah, shut up. Grubbs, you want to come around tomorrow, sign a complaint? Yeah, I certainly do. But these smart aleck kids get away with one thing, pretty soon they're all over the place, writing dirty words and walls, slashing up seats with knives. Give me great pleasure to teach one of them a lesson. 
Okay, let's go. See you tomorrow, Grubbs. Good night, Sarge. Thank you. Hey, Jack, you got a smoke. Hey, Jack, you got a smoke. You got a match? What'd they get you for, Jack? I'm a communist. Yeah? <laughs> they bring me in this time for stealing my old man's car. How about that? Well, I mean, this car is a wreck, you know? It's real shoddy. I know that I was going to end up here again. I was done pretty much better for myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> It's a psychiatrist, you know? He's got me all mixed up. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused, I'm insecure, and I don't relate no more. The cops keep bringing me in here. These geeks keep sending me down the judge, the judge sending me back to the psychiatrist. Talk, 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 talk. I'm not responsible for my actions no more. <laughs> you know, you know, if this keeps up much longer, they're gonna send that psychiatrist to jail. <laughs> Stay up too late anymore, huh? Yeah. Now you're gonna need a lot of sleep if you wanna grow up and strong to be a policeman, right? Yeah. Thank you, Sergeant. Good night. Good night, Mr. Martin. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, Lieutenant. All right, you two in here. Hey, Sarge, you take good care of those boys. They're my buddies. <laughs> you gonna answer a few questions? No such soon. What's your full name? Harold J. Dittmore. What's the J stand for? James. You want any relation to Dittmore, that movie producer? My father. What's his name again? Thomas Dittmore. Oh, yeah, that's right, Thomas. Well, he's going to be real proud of you, Harold J. What's your address? 1041 Coldwater Canyon. Beverly Hills? Yes. Telephone number? Crestview 24599. Age? 16. Weight? 145. Height? Five seven. Occupation. Tough guy. I go to school. What school? Grant High. You listen to that Grant High School? Oh no, Woodruff Grant High School. <laughs> <laughs> they teach you how to be a tough guy at Grant High? Well, self defense. I'm getting a little sick and tired of that, Harold. He's telling you the truth, Sergeant. That manager's a real hardhead. He's always doing things like this. Look, what do you want to get involved for? You're in the clear, son. You start lying for your friend here, you're going to be in trouble, too. I'm not lying. Forget it, Jerry. Sergeant Friday here doesn't seem to want to know the facts tonight. You seem like a nice, quiet young man. It's too bad you couldn't have been more careful about your choice of friends. That's me, all right. 
all the way down the line. Bad companion, bad influence, bad boy, bad, bad, bad. Aren't you scared, Sergeant? Have you got your gun on you? I might make a break for it, you know. Sit down. You're not going to make it any easier on yourself, you know, trying to be a wise guy. Whatever gave you the idea you could go around hitting people? I do it all the time. It's just homework. We have a course in hitting people at Grant High. I'd like to take you outside right now, see if you have any business using your fists. I bet you would. I bet that's how you get your kicks, you beat up juvenile delinquents. You just about qualify for that, Harold. You any idea what you can get for a rap like this? Sure I do. You'll send me to the gas chamber. Come on, Hal, cut it out. You'll send me to the crummy gas chamber and laugh while I die, won't you? You're not that funny, Harold. One more question. Any prior arrests? No. Want me to check it? No. Oh, yeah, check it, will you? I'm lying to you. I'm really a low type. I was in Alcatraz for 20 years. Let me sign this. What is it, a confession? Why don't you read it and find out? I'll sign it, but don't believe it. I lied all the way down the line. There's a pen. Sure you want to trust me? I might steal it, you know. Sign the paper. Hey, that's supposed to be a J, not a G. Harold J. Dittmar. <laughs> oh, no, oh, yeah, that's right, J. Change it. Where'd you learn how to type? <laughs> What's your phone number, Harold? Four. I want to call your father. What's he got to do with it? Well, you got to come down here and get you out. Well, can't you just take me back to my car? Or I'll go home on the bus or something. Look, Harold, I'm giving you a break. I should lock you up. I'm going to release you in custody of your father. Yeah, but it's pretty late. You don't know how it is when you get him out of bed at this time of night. You should have thought of that before. What's your number? Sure, must think we ain't got nothing better doing than sit around here all night waiting on them, you know? I mean, I gotta get up and go to school in the morning. There's one thing I can't stand is tardiness. Well, I mean, that looks terrible on your report card, you know? Sergeant Shipley, please. You, Mr. Dittmar? Yes. Around the booth to your left. I'll tell Sergeant Shipley you're here. In here, Mr. Dittmar. Hey, Daddy. You must have made some mistake. I mean, well, this ain't no rest home, you know. <laughs> hey, Jack, they must have picked that guy up in a motel raid. <laughs> well, I guess I better get him home. 
If that manager discovers that he needs any dental work all of a sudden, I'll be glad to take care of it. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Dimmer. Is there anything else? Something I have to sign? Your boy's in trouble, Mr. Dimmer. Look, everybody loses his temper once in a while. Well, this was more than just losing his temper. This was hooliganism. Well, now, nobody was seriously hurt, were they? There was no property damage? I'm sure you chewed him out. Isn't that enough? Sometimes it is. My son is not a juvenile delinquent, Sergeant. His behavior tonight was delinquent. He needs a lesson. I don't know what kind of people you're used to dealing with, but I'm capable of disciplining my own son. I'm sorry, Mr. Dittmar, but there's a certain procedure that has to be followed. Look, Sergeant, Hal's just not another one of these young hoodlums who populate the benches out there in your hallway. He's a very bright, decent kid. Comes from a good home. He's cared for by a responsible family. Mr. Grubbs is coming in here tomorrow to make a formal complaint against Harold. Assault and battery. Now, that complaint has to be satisfied, even if it means a hearing in juvenile court. Assault and battery? Uh -huh. That's a pretty strong charge for some minor unpleasantness of this kind. Mr. Dittmar, your boy's like a lot of the kids that come through here. A little too fresh for his own good, a little too quick with his fists. If I were you, Mr. Dittmar... I don't need any speeches you... from you on the subject of what you would do if you were me. Look, Dittmar, you're not talking to one of your studio cops. Some of you smug people out there in Beverly Hills seem to have the idea that delinquency just wouldn't dare happen to one of your kids. Your boy attacked another person. That's battery. If he was an adult, he could go to jail for it. But it's the philosophy of the court that a person under 18 isn't responsible for his actions, so Harold won't go to jail. I don't always agree with the philosophy of the court. I think Harold is responsible. I'd like to throw the book at him. I'd also like to throw the book at his family, who you tell me are also very responsible people. It's very late, Sergeant. I suggest we be permitted to leave now. If you've gotten everything off your chest. All right. Well, Mr. Dittmar, just make sure Harold is available. Hey, Daddy. Uh, looks like I'm going to be here for a while, you know. I mean, you think I could borrow your PJs? <laughs> Thought I told you to go home. Oh, I'm getting a ride home with them. Is it okay if we take Jerry home first? Come on. Hey, Daddy, somebody might get Daddy. You don't like this place or something. Thanks a lot, Mr. Dibbar. I'll see you tomorrow, Hal. Look, about what happened... We'll talk about it later. I'd like to tell you what happened. I know what happened. Would you mind if I told you? I mean, my story might be a little different, you know. Look. The prodigal son returns. Are you all right? I'm just great. Never felt better in my life. What happened? He slugged a theater manager. How? Why? I just didn't like his face. You two planning to spend the night out there? He's in trouble now. They've charged him with assault and battery. 
Public enemy number one. One more sarcastic crack out of you, and you're going to wish you never learned how to talk. Evidently, I haven't. Nobody around here seems to want to listen to me. Nobody wants to listen to a lot of smart aleck back talk. Can't you just tell me about it without screaming at each other? I feel like screaming! One of these days, you're going to realize that you can't do things simply because you feel like doing them. I feel like sleeping in the morning, but I don't. I get up and go to work. And because of that, you live in a nice house and drive your own car and have plenty of spending money. You have a whole catalog of advantages most young men your age never have. But the only outlet you seem capable of finding for them is to go into a public place and get rough with a 50-year-old theater manager. It was self-defense. You got smart with some man in the theater, didn't you? I had my feet up on a chair. Big deal. And you gave him a lot of wise dialogue about it, didn't you? All right, I did, but I only hit the manager because this guy jumped on me when I tried to leave. If you hadn't shot your mouth off, you wouldn't have gotten involved with them at all, would you? Well, they started the fight. Just answer my question. If you hadn't gotten smart in the first place, there would have been no fight, would there? I suppose not. So whose fault was it? I did not start that fight. If you hadn't gotten smart, there would have been no fight. Okay. So it was your fault, wasn't it? What to do to make people believe you around this place? Well, you were making a nuisance of yourself. You admitted that. Because it's true, I was making a nuisance myself. I'm a nuisance, and I'm a wise guy, and I shot my mouth off. But I'm not an assaulter and batterer. The only thing I was trying to do in that fight was defend myself. We'd better go to bed. Things may look a little better in the morning after we've all had some sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna sleep like a crummy baby tonight. I'm so calm and relaxed. brought you something to eat. Thanks. What happened to your car? It's out in Westwood. I'll drive you out there tomorrow to pick it up. Can't do that. I'm not allowed to drive my car anymore. New Imperial Edict number one. You can drive it home. 
I'll take you out there tomorrow afternoon. I asked you to do it in the morning, but I suppose that'd be pushing my luck. Just fly able to tear off and drive away to school or someplace like that. But your bicycle's still in the garage. You can ride it to school. Swell. I'll make a big hit around school on my bicycle. Gee, I can roll my pant legs and everything. Wow. Never mind. I'll walk. Oh, hell. oh, I know. I'm very fortunate. He had to walk 30 miles to school every day through the snow. Let's just forget the whole thing. It'll blow over. I'm sorry. Joe man get you out of it? I don't know. A movie manager? Oh, come on. Joe man will have him skipping rope. Everybody seems to take it for granted. I just walked up and slugged this guy because I didn't like his looks or something. Listen, Jerry, you gotta come over to my place and explain to the old man that I was attacked before I hit him. He won't believe me. Well, it's okay, if uh, he won't believe you, he's sure not gonna believe me. Don't kid yourself. He'd rather believe anyone before he takes my word for it. Yeah, but uh, I don't think he really likes me much anyway. Ever since we burned down your garage door that time. He's forgotten that. Anyway, I'm a gangster this week, not a pyromaniac. Well, I don't know. Besides... Besides what? Now what's wrong? My father won't let me see you anymore, except at school. You're a bad influence or something. Oh, swell. Now, I'm a corrupter of red-blooded, innocent American youth. Great. Well, I'll just leave you alone. Because I don't want your moral degeneration on my conscience any longer. Come off it, will you? Nope. I'm not going to contaminate you any further. Well, it sure isn't my fault. Guess what? Big news. I'm a bad influence. How's that? Jerry's father won't let him see me anymore, except at school. Just give me two minutes, you know? I can corrupt anybody. Like that. Hello, Hal. That's it, buddy. Next stop, Alcatraz. Here's my car around the corner. Years. You'll have to give me a push. Okay. Hey, take it easy, will you? I'm sorry.
I'll follow you home. You don't have to do that. Well, maybe I better. Good idea. I might just pull a hit and run job or something for kicks, huh? Well, your car may stall again. you think you were trying to do? Look at me. Nothing. I wasn't trying to do anything. You said you wanted to follow me. You could have gotten us both arrested. Why not? It's my last chance. Oh, that'd go a long way in helping you with the police, wouldn't it? Will you look at me? Hey, you want the keys? I'll give them to you. Here. I don't want your keys. You can keep them. Hal, I want you to look at me when I talk to you. I know what you look like. Stop it, Hal. I want you to stop that from now on. Maybe you think it's funny, but nobody else does. Acting tough isn't going to get you what you want. Give a little, Hal. Other people want things, too. Hal, look at me, please. Can you tell me what's wrong? Is it wrong to want your father to believe you? My father works very hard. He was tired last night. The only time I ever see him is when I do something wrong. He'd like to be with you more often. It's just... Success takes an awful lot of time. He loves you very much. Does he? Your father once told me... the only thing in this world he really loved... was you.
so late. Mm-hmm. Where is the champ? Is he home? Hal's upstairs. He's been terribly upset all day. Hey, he probably wouldn't feel so bad if he'd won that fight. That isn't what's bothering him. He did all right, though. What I hear, there were two of them. I, uh, talked to Bill Walsh today. It isn't the fight that's bothering him, Tom. Bill Walsh is president of that theater, Jane. I know who he is. He's gonna talk to that manager. Tom. Tom, will you please let me talk to you? Here I am. Will you stop playing with that martini for just one minute? I'm not playing with it, I'm building it. <laughs> I want you to listen to me. What seems to be our problem? Did you mean what you said last night about Hal's car and staying in nights? Oh, I think the police experience should be enough. We'll forget about the other things. You better tell Hal that. Not yet. Let him sweat it out for a few days. I think you should tell him now, Tom. You have my undivided attention. Now, what is it? Tom, come off it, will you? Oh, dinner is ready, Mrs. Stittmar. Thank you, Lottie. Here's your drink. Good evening. Sergeant Shipley called me this afternoon. You're to be at the police station at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What for? I rather imagine it has something to do with your fistic activities of last night. I realize that what I'd like to know is to tell you what's going to happen to me. He who dances must pay the fiddler. Will you please just tell me? Be at the police station at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Look, this is me, Hal, not some criminal. Now tell me what's going to happen. Thanks. Thank you, Father. You're a real gem, you are. I should enter you in a contest. Just keep it up. You won't feel so much like shooting your mouth off when the police have finished with you. I don't know why I bother to talk to anyone anymore. Then the obvious thing for you to do is to shut up and eat your dinner. You'll have to take him home. I have an early appointment tomorrow. Don't you think you should go with him yourself? Haven't I made myself clear? Let's take a look at our television weather map. Here in the Middle West, we find most of it under a blanket of snow. As of 7 o'clock this evening, a depth of 2 feet 3 inches was reported in most of the central states, with drifts piling up as high as 5 and 6 feet in some areas. Snow plows were out in full force, but seemed to be making little headway in keeping the roads and highways cleared as the snow continued to fall. Forecast for most of the Middle West is this continued won't cold take very snow throughout the night okay. for most of tomorrow. Can you look back there in the neck of that shirt and you say, why don't John wash his neck more often? I 
I'm not going to let you avoid me this time. Avoid you? What do you mean, avoid you? You've got me trapped. How can I avoid you? <laughs> What's so funny? You can even avoid me by talking about how you're not avoiding me. <laughs> All right. What is it? Wouldn't it be easier to avoid me if I just weren't here at all? What do you mean? I don't know. I was thinking of how. All this constant tension. All this silence. Ellen, what is it you're trying to say? Hmm? Do you want us to separate, Tom? <laughs> Do you? No, not really. Oh, but you think I might? Oh, Helen. You don't just impulsively end 17 years of living together. I've been thinking about it for five years. I've been afraid you might just ask me to leave someday. Or afraid you might not want to ask me because it would embarrass you. Or interfere with your work. Trying to please you, apologizing for not being able to please you. Afraid of not being good enough for you, not keeping up with you. I'm tired of living with that fear, Tom. I love you. I know you did once. I still do. I'd like this room to belong to both of us again, too, Tom. But you're going to have to give back something more. you all to come over here this morning because I hope perhaps Harold's attitude had changed since the other night. Harold, if you're ready to admit you were wrong, you want to apologize, Mr. Grubbs, here for what you did, I think we can wrap this thing up right here and we'll have to take it downtown to juvenile court. How about that? I told you before and I'm telling you again, it was self-defense. I decided it'd be better if we just forgot about the whole thing. What do you mean, forgot about it? I want to withdraw my complaint. Everything seemed a little worse than it really was during the excitement the other night. But today, looking back, it all seems kind of ordinary. Is that it? Nothing to get excited about. No need to persecute the boy just because he lost his temper. Just don't want to put me to all that extra work, hmm? I decided we should uh, give him a break this time. No, you decided we should give him a break. Yes. Well, what else can I do? Nothing, Grubbs. I understand. Happens all the time. You sure this is what you want to do? I want to drop the charges. Sorry. Very lucky young man. Mr. Grubbs here seems to want to do you a favor. He's going to drop the charges. Well, that's very generous of him. Can I go now? I think you need more of a lesson than you're getting away with. You still want to take me outside and beat me up, is that it? Hal, these men are being more than fair. The least you could do is be civil. All right. May I please go now? 
You've caused Mr. Grubbs a lot of trouble the past couple of days. Before you go, I think you should apologize to him. For what? Look, Harold, your father got you out of this. You know that. Good for him. A lot of people trying to help you, Harold. If I were you, I'd find lots of reasons why I'd let them help me and be plenty grateful for it. You gonna make any more speeches about how lucky I am? Okay, wait outside. I'm sick of looking at you. Yes, I'll have to apologize for the way he's acting. Uh, that's all right, Miss Dittmar. Sergeant. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry about Hal. Okay. Just, uh, you know, try to keep him out of trouble from now on, huh? I certainly will. You've been awfully nice about the whole thing. Just got back from the police station. Yeah? I'm at large again. What about Grubbs? Oh, Grubbs is there. We're big buddies now. How come? Your dad fix it somewhere? Yeah. Let me give you a hand. No, it's okay. I'll do it. Oh, come on. I mean, I'm a great grass mower. <laughs> Here, let me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Coke, large. Say, how'd you like to go in the landscaping business? 
You, me, and my dad, we'd make a great team. <laughs> I guess I fouled things up for good this time, huh? Who cares? Let them summon to the crummy gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> A very interesting phone call this afternoon. Bill Walsh called me. Hello? You might be interested in what he had to say. What's that? It concerned you. Huh? Yes, it concerned your behavior at the police station this morning. Certain people seem to have taken offense at the way you behaved. I wonder why. You wouldn't care to tell me why, would you? All right, then I'll tell you why. You were surly and insulting. Those are two of the words I heard applied to it. You wouldn't even apologize to Mr. Grubbs. Your mother had to do that for you. Tom. You keep out of this. I had hoped that you might learn something from your little brush with the law. I thought perhaps we could dispense with the restrictions we imposed the other night. Evidently, I was wrong. You haven't learned a thing. So, we'll just continue with the restrictions. And perhaps we can add a few more as we go along. No more car, no going out at nights, no, no more... No fighting, no lying, no stealing, no cheating, no breathing, nothing. Okay. Anything else you can think of? Listen, you. You don't know how lucky you are to be getting off so easily. Do you think I enjoy having to ask my friends to get my son out of trouble with the police? I didn't ask you to call him. You would rather have gone to jail, I suppose. I was innocent. You said that before, and I didn't notice it having any profound effect on anyone. Then doesn't it strike you as just a little bit dishonest? What? Well, if you think I'm so guilty, then pulling strings to get me out of it is dishonest, isn't it? Okay, I was a wise guy. I was fresh. If you think I haven't learned that, you're out of your mind. You can keep me in nights for 10 years and I won't learn that lesson any better than I already have. You want to think of me as a juvenile delinquent. Okay, if it makes you feel any better, fine. Maybe you'll all be a lot happier if I just conform to your opinion of me. I'll have you calling so many of your big Hollywood friends getting me out of trouble, you won't have time to do anything else. You'll have to hire another secretary to do nothing but monitor the crummy police broadcasts. That little outburst of bile will just about be the last of this, because I'm awfully sick of it. You got into a fight. You got into trouble. We got you out. It's over now. Let's forget about it and hope that you can behave better in the future. I remember what a teacher of mine once told me, and you'd best learn it before you get much older. He said, it doesn't matter, and nobody cares how you fall down. The only thing anybody's interested in is how you get up. Oh, don't start reciting your corny Nebraska proverbs at me. Welcome back to the fold, sinner. I'm up to air with your crummy axioms. Can't you ever say anything to me without making a speech? Can't you just talk? That's enough out of you. I've got something to say, and I'm going to say it. You want to know something? I'm glad I hit that guy. What do you think of that? I'd do it again just to find out what you really think of me. I never did know. The only time I ever see is at this crummy dinner table. And then all you do is make speeches and quote a lot of sayings from your dear old boyhood days in Nebraska. I don't know why I ever expected you to believe me. You don't even know me. How could you possibly know whether I'm lying or telling the truth? Excuse me. Al?
it to come out that way. You've just got to be right all the time, don't you? Hasn't it occurred to you that he might be right about that fight? Oh, Helen, that's not the point. People aren't interested in such fine lines between right and wrong. He can't go around badgering people with picky on distinctions. They just aren't that important. Maybe those fine lines aren't important to you anymore. But they're still important to Hal. We've taught him to tell the truth. You and I, we've tried to teach him to be honest and fair, haven't we? Isn't that what we've tried to teach him? If he's telling the truth, you should be proud of him. But all he got from you was a lot of abuse. He's right about one thing. You don't know him. He's a stranger to you. I always thought I knew him pretty well. Uh, how do you talk to him? I don't know. I can't say three words to him without offending him some way. The only time you see him is at the dinner table. Or when you want to punish him for something. I remember once when you lectured him about charging too many things at the department store. He came to me later very upset and very confused. He was sorry about the money, but he asked me, why is it Dad always bowls me out for spending money when money is the only thing he ever gives me? I couldn't answer him. Maybe you can. I even had to tell him you loved him yesterday. He didn't know that. Your son didn't know you loved him. Well, oh, what do you want around here? I want to talk to you for a minute. Yeah, I'm very busy. It won't take long. I just want to ask you a favor. A favor? What kind of a favor do you think I'm going to do for you? Look, I'm sorry about the fight, Mr. Grubbs. So? I want to apologize. You're a little late. Well, I'm willing to admit if it hadn't been for me getting wise with that guy in the first place, none of it would have happened. That's true. I just want you to know I'm sorry it did happen. But there's one thing I want to ask you. Well, what is it? I haven't got all night. I want you to explain to my father that I only hit you because I was grabbed. What? Well, it's all over now, and it can't make any difference to you. But it sure makes a big difference to me, Mr. Grubbs. You hit me, didn't you? Pure and simple assault. That's the way it was, and that's the way it's going to stay. One crummy phone call, just Mr. Dittmar, your son hit me in self-defense. Get out of here. 
Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Grubbs. I came here to apologize and ask a polite favor. You don't have to get nasty about it. I said get out. I mean now, all the way up. I didn't come here looking for trouble, Mr. Grubbs, so cut it as out. As far as I'm concerned, you're always looking for trouble. Leave me alone, will you? Are you going to get out of my theater, or do I have to throw you out again? Close the door. Say for yourself. I thought you were the big wise guy. Knew all the answers. Come on, answer this one. I went there to apologize and ask him a polite favor. I wanted him to tell my father the truth. I asked him to explain that I only hit him in self-defense. I apologized and I asked him this favor. He got nasty about it. He took my arm and tried to push me out of his office. The only thing I could do was hit him. It's quite an answer. I'll hit him again right now if you want to see me do it. Sit down. Still trying to prove you're a tough guy? No. Okay. Now tell me why you did it. I just told you. You expect me to believe that? No. Well, why'd you say it? Because it's the truth. Harold, what makes you think I won't believe the truth if I hear it? You heard it once before and you wouldn't believe it. Pretty much like my father that way. I called your father, Harold. He should be here in a few minutes. We're gonna have a little talk with him. You wait here, huh? Mr. Lipnar. Where is he? In my office. Uh, hold it just a minute. Is he all right? Yeah, yeah, sure, he's fine. What happened? Mr. Lipnar, I'd like you to meet Mr. Grubbs. How do you do? Hello? Harold just walked into Mr. Grubbs' office and slugged him again. How about that? He's just another young hoodlum. Shut up, Grubbs. When a boy has to hit somebody to get his father to believe him, there's something wrong. What happened the other night, Grubbs? What do you mean, what happened, Sergeant? I told you, he attacked me. That boy got some pretty rough treatment because of what you told me. He had it coming to him. Grubbs. You want to tell us what really happened the other night? He hit me. Why did he hit you? Uh, he was uh, causing a disturbance in the theater. He hit you because he was causing a disturbance. I didn't say that. What did you say? Well, I, I told him to go to my office and he wouldn't go. He hit you because he wouldn't go to your office? No. And why? Why did he hit you then? Well, he started to leave the theater. And you grabbed him? No, I didn't grab him. Who did? My doorman did. He broke away from him? Yes. And then you grabbed him? He hit me. In self-defense. All right. But... 
tonight wasn't self-defense. I was attacked. As far as I'm concerned, you got that eye walking into a door. That boy walking deliberately... into a door. You got a whole flock of boys to work on over in your theater. They're probably tearing it to pieces right now. Mr. Dittmar has got only one boy to worry about. Go on out and wait in my car. I'll drive you back. Why didn't you believe Harold the other night, Mr. Dittmar? You didn't believe him. I'm not his father. I made a mistake, Mr. Dittmar. I don't suppose I know my own boy any too well either. I suppose too many fathers do. But I know when he's lying or when he's telling the truth. You know, if I'm right about four out of five kids that come through here, that's a pretty good average for a cop. Shows up pretty good downtown. But if that fifth kid happens to be your own, can't afford any mistakes. You gotta be right all the time. I guess I just didn't realize it was so important. Why don't you take him home? But Hello. Grubbs admitted it was self-defense. Should please call it even for tonight. telling the truth. I'm sorry you had to hit him to prove it. So am I. Bud. about one thing. What's that? Glad it's grubs you hit, not me. That's some shiner you gave. Well, come on, you want to spend your whole life at a crummy police station? <laughs> 